I originally interviewed Martin Davison, my next guest, uh, at the tail end of last year, and we got into such an intriguing conversation about the wares, the warfels, and and this true horror of mobilising hate, the story of the final solution, that we had to cut it short. And so I'm delighted to be joined, to have joining me back in the uh, on the line, uh, the author of Mobilising Hate, the story of the final solution, Martin Davidson himself. Martin, happy new year and good to have you back. Thank you very much for having me back. The, the pleasure is all mine. Just a, a brief recap, because we were talk, one of the things we were talking about, basically, was um, the, 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 the banality of... Of, of evil, if you like, and the fact that that the, the, there was sort of a mass, almost you could say, all go, or you, could, you could argue, an almost a mass psychosis. Well, they, they, they I, I think yes, yes. It's it's what I was trying to do uh, in the book was two things. One was to join together into a sense of narrative the events that took events as they were in the months after the First World War and took us all the way through to what we now call the final solution in recognition of the fact that what was perpetrated uh, mostly across the eastern, the eastern stretch of, uh, uh, of, 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 of the Nazi empire, a crime without precedent, a crime without antecedent, uh, 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 just something so extraordinary and so grim that although the world, sadly, is full of examples of mass mass hatred and mass extermination that come close to the Holocaust, I think we're, we're right in thinking the Holocaust, as it finally took its, its terrible uh, end forms, was unique. Therefore, it begs the question, what were the sequence of events that led up to it? But just simply to do a narrative, X led to X led to Y led to Z, is in itself not enough. In, in a funny sort of way, I think we have those images so embedded in our head, even those of us who don't know the subject, we know, we, we, we see black and white images of screaming Hitler, we see uh, uh, documentary images of shops being uh, vandalised with stars of David painted on them and German Germans forbidden from going in. Uh, and within two minutes of that, in any f- most historical documentaries, we're at the gates of Auschwitz. So the, 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 the sense, and that, that sort of breeds a sense that the whole thing was kind of inevitable and all a bit of a given. So I wanted to, 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 to try and explain the thing with a narrative, but also at its heart, an explanation, a sense of this is, these aren't just events, dear boy, as Harold McMillan would have said. These are driven by a mindset. They, they happen because enough people want them to happen and are never satisfied with any form that these 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 attitudes take if there is a more extreme form available so it was trying to bring those two things together so it's interesting that when you you, 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 you there's a sort of paradox here because you, you the first thing you you say to me is banality and mass psychosis well the, the two are different they're the opposites there's nothing banal about mass psychosis but on the other hand mass psychosis when it's not harnessed to quite Sort of uh, ordinary social processes is 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 just that it's a chimera in the head, and what was so terrible about what happened in Germany between those years was that there was a mindset, a kind of uh, uh, you know this you know this thing didn't happen by accident, and it was harnessed to everything that was most ordinary about the processes by which Nazi Germany got about its business, and it's that terrible combination that I try to unpack in this book. But if you if if you go back to the you know the the reason <clears throat> the Germany needed something to the German people needed something needed an explanation they felt after the the, the first world war the armistice and the uh, you know what what happened in the Weimar Republic after that they needed somebody to blame because they couldn't accept that it might have been possibly their fault and and it, and it it tropes back to the, to that easiest of targets which has a line through history from the crusades but from you know from from biblical times with with that persecution of a certain race and that 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 particular race is is the jewish people and and so they could buy into that narrative because it was if you like and i'm not just talking about germany but in in several you know in several Albeit Christian European, you know, Christian Western European countries, the Jews were were often subjects of massacres and pogroms. Yes, it it, it is. But what what the, the, what what's so uniquely terrible about what happened in Germany in the years, particularly after the First World War, and which were allowed to escalate and accelerate and radicalize for the next twenty years, is that Germany had lots of people at which they could point the finger of blame after the First World War, uh, not least the great powers uh, uh, who who had contrived to trick them out of a victory they felt was theirs. What's so so weird about the, 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 the pointing the finger of blame 
particularly at the Jews, is, is how little sense it made even at the time. 100,000 German Jews had quite proudly and happily put on German uniform. The, 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 the very fact that Adolf Hitler himself had been recommended for an Iron Cross was the responsibility of a Jewish senior officer. So there was nothing, nobody at the time ever thought that the First World War was, it was covertly a war being fought for Jewish interests. I mean, the only, the only exception to that was that Henry Ford, the, 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 the car manufacturer and famous anti-Semite, would later uh, 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 spin the narrative that that blamed America getting involved in the First World War at all as being uh, the result of Jewish trickery. But that came later. So what is what 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 I try and do in the book is go okay. Uh, uh, we can absolutely see why the Second World War would be triggered by the experience of losing the First World War. But what has that got to do with the Jews? And there is a very, very strange process that takes place in Germany in the months after the First World War, not least because Germany at that point is is not a particularly anti-Semitic country, not compared to Russia or France or even, one might say, Britain. Um, uh, uh, and and the, the Jewish population in Germany, about 600,000, 1% of the population is incredibly assimilated. Uh, 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 you know, Germany is, a, is, 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 you know, a liberal, a liberal country when it comes to uh, having assimilated its Jewish population population. So something happens. And this is this is this is where the story becomes very, very weird. Because when you try and track exactly what it is, and I, I I personify this around very much around the figure of Hitler. I mean, he's not the only one, but he is the principal mover in this. I think there's there's, there's no doubt about that. And 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 what Hitler tries to do in the years after the war is establish a causal chain that links the predicament that Germany he feels Germany is in. Um, and the role played by a particularly pathological view of, 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 of Jewish influence in the world that is new and modern and distinct from how the former used to take. And I think what you have there is what Hitler is doing is um, uh, his aspiration for Germany is how do I make sure that this country wins for itself eternal security, that it, this, this, this disaster of the First World War and all the things that the First World War were fought to achieve never, ever happened happens again. And at the front of his mind comes a sense of that level of permanent security for a future Germany relies on annihilating threat. And threat to Germany comes in all sorts of forms, uh, its own vulnerability because it doesn't grow enough food, its geopolitical vulnerability because unlike Britain, it doesn't have a sea around it to protect it, it's geographically vulnerable. And third, there is this sense of which we are, uh, the Germans are prey to a new kind of threat consistent with the modern world, and it takes the form of uh, a, a new way of defining Jewishness. And that is what makes it so dangerous. If he was just simply pointing the finger at a maligned minority, it was your fault, you particular Jewish population in Germany, you weren't loyal enough, it would have fizzled out very quickly. But it takes on it takes on the weight and the heft of being a whole theory about how the world works mm. that makes it so depressing and uh, so dangerous. And there's a twisted ide- uh, there's a twisted ideology that that you know we have this Aryan myth that comes and yes. d- degenerate art and degenerate theatre and this is all it's not just well yes. you you lot are the moneylenders therefore it's your fault it's actually no what we're going wrong is you know we need to go back to our quote unquote Nordic Nordic past you yeah. know when we were when we were the Aryan superheroes which never existed but hey you know a few no. throw, throw a few runes in there and get a bit of Wagner playing and we'll see where we go with it and um and this this perverts everything and this buys into this whole again we go back to that Teutonic knight sort of uh yes. look at the world and and little by little if you're rewriting the history books and you're telling the children this is exactly how the german people the great german people those those one you know who were as slim as goring who were as tall as goebbels and who was blonde who was blonde <laughs> as hitler as the joke used to go um you know uh, but they they buy into this and suddenly in a very short period of time we have this the, the book is called mobilizing hate and and suddenly this hate is not only mobilized but goes out of control Yes, I, 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 the, the, the use of the word mobilizing hate was very deliberate. What I wanted was a phrase that I think gave credit to the fact that this is a process that's stoked. It's, it's, it, 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 it 
th- th- there's a mindset at work that starts off. I, I locate it very much in the mind of one man. In in in, in this case, it's the mind uh, the mind of Adolf Hitler, circa ni- between 1919 and 1923. I mean, clearly it involves more than just one man. But the, the, his preoccupation with these ideas are the, uh, the, that's the thing that's going to prove decisive in this story, and it's the story of how that idea becomes the kernel for a political movement, uh, a, 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 how a political movement that, that, that writes for itself a, a creed, a kind of, it's, it's more than just a political manifesto. It's a view of how the world works. It's a view of how the world has always worked and how we will always work. So H- H- Hitler is a very pretentious thinker. He thinks in cosmic terms. That idea then takes root at the heart of a political movement and then in due course, 10 years later, in 1933, when Hitler assumes power as, as Chancellor of Germany, it becomes the guiding principle for a regime. So it's a story of how at every stage of Hitler's career, from total anonymity to being the Fuhrer and you know the great warlord, this idea about the role the Jews have played in world history and Germany's role in stopping that, in, 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 in having been given the job by providence of ridding the world of this of this of this terrible scourge as he sees it it expands as he expands it's in perfect lockstep so when he's alone alone spluttering prophet galvanizing crowds on the street corners of early 20s munich that idea is 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 his alone and that of a small group of people for whom this 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 definition of, of, of German antagonism speaks so loudly and it grows and grows and grows. So it's, 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 it, it remains central to everything he thinks is a way of explaining the world. And I, I think the, the, the Aryan thing is really, really interesting. Of course, yes, it has its corollary. If these people are demonic others who are not just inferior to us, but in a weird kind of way, a global threat. That's, that's why anti-Semitism is different from, as it's quotes, ordinary racism. Ordinary racism uh, uh, diagnoses certain groups of people as being merely inferior to you, and they're in the way. That's so. The British, if you, the British in 1890 uh, would have had a perfectly respectable view, which is that there's an, a, a pyramid of of of, of racial uh, worth, the uh, white European at the top, and you know, I don't go through the list, but you can imagine as you go down which groups are included as 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 this pyramid descends. Well, it, the thing about anti-Semitism is it's both. So the, the Jews are both are both uh, caught up in this appalling German rhetoric of what they call the untermensch, the subhuman. But on the other hand, what makes them so terrifying is that they are also at the same time equated with all the forces that determine and 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 r- govern the modern world. Money, c- commerce, the media, ideology, you know, they, they, they're all of these threads if you if you if you have the paranoid mind of the anti-Semite, all these threads all lead back to versions of Jewishness. That's what makes them so terrifying. So they're both they're both they're both imbued with more power than you. They're 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 global. They're a network. All all that stuff. And they're less powerful than you because they're reviled, disgust. You know they 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 are made synonymous in the German mind with everything that they find disgusting. Hence your word degenerate. Um, and uh, uh, that is what that is what makes it uh, so terrifying. It also, you know, you can see that in 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 in, in the the in the enduring the enduring sort of uh, uh, mark of antisemitism even today mm. has that duality about it, which is which is that 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 that, that, that it is it is slight it it is racist, but it is slightly different from as I say orthodox racism, which is just about a, a, a kind of an appalling. Uh, uh, imperial hierarchy. Some people at the top. People, uh, the, the 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 Jewish phobia is is different and more complicated. You can, and you can, why in the end more destructive? You can argue that yeah, if if you like, and I mean, I, it's all abhor- it's all abhorrent. Let's get this straight. But you know, your 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 stark your stark raving racist who just goes right as you said. The British Empire said right, we're trampling on those people because they're beneath us. Fair enough. Yes. But with 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 what the Nazis do is it's the and the anti semitism is like these people are beneath us, but. It's, it's, even though they're beneath us, they've still got a plot against us, and that's that's yes. particular. To, and we have to do something about that. How does uh, 1933 Hitler goes in as chancellor? D- d- I mean, it, it doesn't happen immediately. And this is—is is it perhaps an insidious sort of seeping it, well, uh, yes, that, we, it, it, that we see, and it builds? Well, there, there is a process at work, hence mobilising. It's 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 a relentless effort that never ever stops. And the 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 the, the way I, I've I've tried to characterise it is, is that there is a gap, 
as there always is with extreme views, there are people who who, who embody and, and 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 proselytize and are defined by the most extreme of views, which they feel are justified by the extremity of the times. Um, and uh, uh, around them, if you like, are sort of concentric rings. of, uh, uh, And there is a gap between the Nazi fanatic and what you might call the agnostic. And I'm absolutely convinced that if you were to take a poll, if you went back to Germany in 1933 and, I don't know, wandered around a random city, I don't know, Osnabrück or, or Dortmund, um, and, and took soundings of what people thought about how important to their life every day was the issue of uh, the Jewish control of the media. Well, you, you get a blank look. It's, it's just not something uh, that, that is animating people. Now, the, the thing is, it's interesting, is the Nazis know that. They know that, but they will not let that deter them. And what you have in, 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 in the, 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 the real mover and shaker here is head of propaganda Goebbels. And Goebbels, and sadly, is a genius. He really, really, really does understand. He understands two things. And actually, a lot of media to this day understand the same mechanism, which is you dial up and you dial down, depending on what kind of reaction you're getting. And your, 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 your attempt to whip up an extreme state of mind is done in two ways. One is to be very, very specific about what it is about what a reviled group has done that earns them this, this, this level of contempt and hostility. But on the other hand, you also flatter the, the, your readers and your viewers with a sense of how, 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 how worth, worthy they are of a future spared all of this grief from this outgroup. Um, in other words, it's both flattering and it's annihilating at the same time. And, and nobody does that better. So Goebbels is the master of the purple prayers, what I call sort of the clawing self-regard. He is the person who invents those phrases, the decent, honest, working family, the, 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 the decent instincts of the, the, of the people's communities, the German phrase. But it's the same thing. It's the decent, you know, the, the silent majority who will no longer stand for having everything that they value in life trampled underfoot by this 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 hated m m minority mm. and at the same time as he's doing that he is also probing like lancing a boil what is the best way to agitate and mobilize people into into closing that gap between the agnostics and the fanatics and what i try to describe in the book is it starts off quite crudely um, and it's about turning people into a pariah how do you isolate a community within within a wider society and turn them into lepers and the the the, the two links that, that 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 bind a minority into the wider society are to put it crudely sex and money who you're married mm. who you're having children with but also how you make your profit how you're making a livelihood how you're making a living and, and, and Goebbels very cleverly identifies this is right. I'll go for those two. So the first thing he organizes is an economic boycott. Um, the famous image of all the soldiers stopping people going into Jewish shops. Jew, uh, Germans don't buy shops, don't buy things from, from Jews. So it's about, you know, let's, let's hit them where it really hurts. And that's their ability to make a livelihood. But the, the sex thing is also a big, a, a very big part of it. And it, it culminates in this whole idea of, which they borrow from 20s racist America, the idea that if you're having sex across the race line, in America it would be white and black, mm. but in Germany, what they would call Aryan and, 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 and in this case, Jewish, but also Polish, I mean, there, there are other racial characters involved here, makes you guilty of race shame. So, 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 so the, it's the idea that you've breached national honor sexually. Mm. So, but also each of those two things, there's a pathological element to it so so if you're if you're if you're uh, uh, if you're trying to create antagonism towards a group of people financial jealousy and covetousness on the one hand and sort of sexual prurience on the other are very powerful buttons to press and goebbels knows how to press them but he he he, he is clever enough to realize that it's not enough because there's something vaguely pornographic about both and p people are ashamed there is a whiff of shame about being made to feel, you know, a lot of people enjoy feeling those things, but you also know it doesn't do you much credit. So alongside that, Goebbels masterminds a whole campaign of the, the, the cleverest, most re revered, most uh, respected intellectuals. They also get involved and start telling you millions of reasons across anthropology, theology, uh, literary criticism even, all sorts of extremely, extremely well-respected 
ways of understanding society, they all weigh in too. And they all have their version of why it is that the, the, the campaign of hatred against Jews is justified in, 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 in pursuit of a, of, a, of a greater Germany. And you put those two things together, the sort of bottom up, gutter up, uh, 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 type of hatred with a whiff of pornography and covetousness and then the, all the intellectuals and the, the policy makers and the clever people and the opinion formers also telling you it makes a very, very powerful and very malign uh, uh, atmosphere. And not only that, it's the fact you talk, about, you talk about the man in the street in Dortmund, for example, but he's got Spear in the Ministry of Public Works, so therefore everybody's got a job. So they're building these autobahns, they're doing these big yes. stadiums, they're having these rallies. It feels, and excuse me, but it feels good to be German in, in the 30s because we're, you know, we're, 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 we're making Germany great again. Sorry to use that one, but you, you see what I'm going with, with that for. So the man in the street, to begin with, he's more interested in, in putting you know, food in his belly and you know, beer in his whatever, and he's got a job. So therefore, it must be working because you know, young you know, young Heinrich's got a job over there in the corner. Yes, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. The 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 the, the, the reconciliation that the Nazis are trying to do early on is, on the one hand, bank all the goodwill that uh, Hitler's the Nazis' commitment to the working to to to, to the life of the of, of the working German, which is real and sincere, by the way. I mean, uh, uh, the, 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 you know, Hitler. <laughs> Hitler, Hitler is, 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 is absolutely adamant that uh, making Germany great again it will be impossible if the great majority of the working class are not invested in what Germany is doing. And it's all perfectly sincere. It's not cynical. So the idea of full employment, I mean, full employment with, in an economy geared to war, admittedly, but nevertheless, it is working towards full employment. Uh, 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 this is a regime that if for the first time in, you know, really gets interested in things like pensions and social insurance in Holland. Holidays, uh, in, in in you know the, the, there are a whole lot of policies that are uh, implemented expressly to 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 to, to um, confirm and consolidate support from the street up for everything that Hitler is doing. And and you, that phrase you said, you know, what a great time to be a German. Uh, my my colleague at the BBC, Lawrence Rees, who, who made those great uh, series in the 90s, uh, 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 Warding from History, I remember him telling me that he'd interviewed a lot of old, I mean, they're all dead now, but, you know, he'd interviewed scores and scores and scores of Germans of a certain age, and what they all had in common was, oh, that was the best time to be a German. And 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 and, and it's, it's really interesting. So my German great-grandmother, uh, I remember her having this phrase, and she said, if only, and this is very common, if only Hitler had died in 1930, and what they meant by that was uh, uh, there was a real sense in which he had he had he had uh, uh, you know Germany was a completely unrecognizable uh, uh, state by 1938 1939 it was the war and and obviously losing the Second World War that was to pr prove so disastrous. So uh, all through this period, what the Nazis are doing are trading off two things. One is all the reasons why Germans uh, should feel themselves to be, uh, you know, you know, a, 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 a race, a, a, you know, a, a nation more worthy of, of of running the world than anybody else. At the same time as as pointing the finger at all the people and the peoples who are being accused because. In the, in the same way that Bolshevik Russia is about class, Nazi Germany was about race. Indeed. And there were people who stood up. There were people who, who blew whistles, who said, look, something bad is happening here. But most of Europe was looking towards Germany and going, this, you know, this is amazing what that man Hitler's done. And, um, you know, we should be, ta we should be taking a lead from there. So a lot of people just weren't interested. They, they, they well, they, they, they the slow awakening is is an is an extraordinary story, and um, I I mean I I, I, I uh, there's there's the the um, I don't know if any of you have um, been watching SAS Rogue Heroes the the the, the, the BBC series dramatising the birth of the SAS. Well, one of the 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 the, the key figures in 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 the early SAS was the was the uh, very charismatic upper class uh, guy who who had been visiting Germany and, and, and in common with quite a lot of sort of more patrician Brits. Uh, remember that uh, RAF pilot Tom Neal was, was, a, was a, a, the great Spitfire um, a Battle of Britain ace. He too uh, would, uh, remember, admitted in an interview, you know, I used to travel to Germany, 36, 37, 38, and I was pretty impressed, mm. pretty impressed by it. Was a, but the scales all dropped from their eyes and including 
one of the early founders of the SAS who, who, who had a German girlfriend, very glamorous, and uh, it was Kristallnacht. It was the night when the whole of Germany went on the rampage and destroyed and burned uh, Jewish businesses, synagogues, Jewish lives, beat up Jews, put thousands of Jews into concentration camps. That's when the scales fell from their eyes. And I think there is a real wake up moment. And that's the point where um, uh, 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 notions of appeasement and, and, and sort of covert admiration for Germany, that falls away, except among among a very small hardcore of fascist leaning uh, uh, Brits. And, 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 and it's, 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 it's really not true to say that by 1939, 19, 1940, there was, there was considerable resistance to what Churchill had been saying for a long time. I think there was pretty clear Nazi Germany was a, 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 a really nasty affair and nobody is arguing at that point oh but but at least the trains run on time that mm. equation is gone yeah um, now the the, the 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 Jewish element everybody knows that the people paying the biggest price bearing the brunt for all this Nazi nightmare uh, are the Jews alongside people on the left yeah so it's it's the first targets are communists socialists social democrats trade unionists liberals you know pe- pe- people who people guilty of wrong uh, of wrong thinking but they, 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 nobody's ever in any doubt that this is not a good place to be Jewish in. I think the question is uh, the extent to which they, they cared uh, that that was that was slightly different um, uh, uh, and, and would remain an issue all the way all the way through the war and but the, and, and the whistleblowers the book uh, the book goes on to describe the three most famous whistleblowers uh, 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 these are people that, that, that in, based in East Europe. Uh, largely, who are the ones who are gathering the reports and sending them urgently to the West, to the to, to the Vatican, to the World Jewish Council, to the to to, to anyone with an intray that might be able to 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 have an influence on 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 on, on military policy. So the first is Vitold Pelecki, who gets himself arrested deliberately. It's, Course, yeah. uh, uh, so he becomes an inmate in Auschwitz, yeah. from which he organises a Polish resistance circle. But he he arrives in Auschwitz when it's a Polish, it's a Polish, um, um, it's a camp for, for 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 Polish political prisoners. He then watches to his horror as it slowly morphs into what we know it as, which is a centre for the for the the mass killing of primarily Jews, but also of of Roma and uh, the disabled and 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 gay people and Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, I mean, a whole slew of victims. And he is sending out reports and he contrives to escape after two and a half years of, uh, uh, of uh, self, self-imposed self imprisonment uh, in Auschwitz to carry on the fight. The second is the extraordinary Polish um, uh, diplomat um, um, uh, Jan Karski, who similarly gets himself smuggled into the Warsaw Ghetto in order to see for himself what's going on. And then very famously describes a slaughter that he sees at a railway siding outside Warsaw um, on on, on the outskirts of one of the the new breed of death camps, and he sees he sees what is what is actually uh, 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 an example of the fast forming mm. Holocaust as we understand it. He then escapes, takes him six months to get all the way r- around to, to to Portugal, gets back to Britain. Um, and then, and then, most amazingly, uh, ends up in the White House. He goes to America, and he has an hour with um, Roosevelt. But it's the, the the thing that embodies his his attempt to galvanise the world is the extraordinary meeting he has with the Supreme Court Judge Frank Furter, Frank uh, Frank Furter, yeah, um, uh, the week before, uh, who 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 is so flabbergasted on being on having described to him the systematic mass extermination that is happening. And his line has become a sort of a totem ever since. He said, it's not that I don't believe you, it's that I can't believe you. Yeah. Um, and then of, the, the third of the whistleblowers is a pair, uh, a pair of people who escape, um, uh, Rudolf Verber and Alfred Wetzler, famously escape from Auschwitz with notes they've taken notes of everything and they they form a report and that becomes one of the most famous once again martin the clock has beaten us on this one believe it or not (laughs) once again the book is called mobilizing hate the story of hitler's final solution i'm going to run out of time it's been great to have you back on uh martin uh if people want to find you online can they find you online yes i'm i'm on twitter at um at m uh, peter davidson thanks for your time today the book is called mobilizing uh, hate news up next